Hello and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on support case billing. So today we're going to go through a support case and we're going to generate billable invoices from it. So let's get started. So we'll create a brand new case and we'll do that for Alphabet School Center. We'll assign the case to us. And we'll say available activities and we'll mark the case open. Now a few things. The first is the case class is very critical as to how you bill your invoices out. So if we take a look at the case class there's a few settings in here. The first one is the case class needs to be marked billable. The second is the billing mode. So this billing mode is per case, but you also have the option of per activity. In scenarios where you have very long term cases, you may want to bill per activity so that you can get your invoices generated more frequently rather than waiting for the case to close before generating an invoice. And that's what per case does. You also have the option to round the time so we're rounding by 10 minutes and we have a minimum billable time at 15 and we're using this non-stock item code as our billable item this non-stock item has its own price and then if certain customers get different prices you can set that up under the sales price or the discount options in Acumatica so let's go through this per case example and we'll create a couple activities. So this one was performed research. We'll track the time. We'll put in a half an hour. We'll mark it billable. You can override the billable time if you need to. Anytime you mark something billable, Acumatica is going to request the project name. Now, if you're not using projects, you can simply put X here. If you choose a project, this activity will roll into that project and it can accrue expenses against the project. So now we have our first activity. Let's add a phone call here also. And we'll track this one. This one will be an hour and a half. Okay, so a couple other things here. Additional info, it's the contract that's used to generate invoices. So this customer has two contracts. Let's select this one. And down here you notice there's a total billable time of two hours. That's the cumulative time based on the two activities here. Now let's just take a look at this contract for a moment. The contract is a standard contract. There's no details. It's simply just active. The other thing is, is I made the billing period on demand. And this is part of your contract template where you can define how often the billings for this should be scheduled. So you could always schedule monthly, for example, but if you want to generate invoices on demand, meaning anytime you want to, select on demand here then you're not set to a schedule there are no detailed line items in here it's just a standard contract that we're using to pass information along in the contract we have the ability to click on inquiries and look at our contract usage so these are the unbilled transactions this is from a previous case that I did prior to this video but the case we're working on currently is not there in order to get this contract usage to follow into the contract so that it can be at bill, we need to close the case and we need to release the case. And that's because our class ID is per case. We're requiring the case to be completed before it can be billed. So let's release this. And now if we go back to our contract, and we go to inquiries contract usage 
You can now see the additional case here with the two hours. Now, in order to get this to generate invoices, anything in this unbilled transactions will get generated as soon as we run our contract billing. So if we go back to the contract and perform actions, run contract billing, and we go to our AR history, we can now see this new invoice that was generated. So a few things about the invoice and how it was generated. If we go back to the contract summary settings, you'll notice the invoice description. The invoice description formula gives you the ability to put different tags, database tags here, and build out your invoice description. So you can see we're first using what action was used in the contract, the contract ID, and so on as our description. The same thing holds true for the line description. You can see the different lines are using information from these tags here. And one of the nice things about your AR invoice is if you turn the field on, you can see the case IDs. So when you're following up or accounting is following up with this invoice, they want to know what these amounts are for. They can drill into the case. Additionally, you can modify the AR invoice to include the case ID if you want to. So that's it for case class where it's set for per case. Let's create another support ticket and we'll do it per activity and I'll show you that. So in this case we'll create a new case and we'll use a per activity case class. And Again, if we take a look at the case class, it's basically set to per activity here. This means the activity is responsible for getting itself over to the contract usage. So let's select the same customer. We'll take the case. We'll pick a contract, same one. And we'll add a note. We'll track our time, two and a half hours, we'll give it an X project and complete it. Now this case is still open, but because we're set to per activity billing, I do have the ability to generate an invoice from this. So to do that, if we open up our contract again, so we can monitor its progress. Once again, under contract usage, I'm not going to see this activity yet. To see this activity, what I need to do is go to time and expenses and release my time activity. So here is the activity. We followed up with a manager here for two and a half hours. Notice under release activity, it gives us links to the case, the contract. So we'll check this and say process. And then if we go back to our contract and we go to inquiries contract usage, you can now see this activity for two and a half hours. Again, per activity is nice because you get a more real time flow of invoices to the customer. Instead of waiting for a case, some cases might be, it may be a longer project that you may work, be working on and you just don't want to wait until the very, very end where the customer says, okay, you can close the case for your invoice to go out. So if I go back to this contract and I run contract billing again, you can now see the new invoice for $375. And that's based on this two and a half hours. Now, this inventory IT, as you recall before, the case class itself, we go back a couple of screens here, if you recall before, the case class itself had a labor item, but when you're set to per activity, it doesn't. Instead, the labor item comes from the activity. So if we add a note here again, and we'll just give it a we'll just give it a test note, and we'll track the time. 
and we'll give it a half an hour. You'll notice that Acumatica has a labor item here. This is the labor item that's used in the invoice. So the activity itself carries this through to the contract and over to the invoice. The default labor item is used from your employee's default profile. So in the employee default profile, there's a default labor item and that's what comes through here. One other note here is when you're creating these activities, you must mark them as complete. If they're not complete, they won't show up under release time activities and they won't come through. Also, keep an eye on your release time activities because as you release them, every once in a while, if an employee doesn't have a labor rate, the time activity will not release because it has no way to generate the transaction. So that's it. That's a quick look at how we generate invoices from support tickets. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you.